Okay, so for our third video on measures of central tendency and variability, we're going to speak more to how these relate back to the normal distribution, uh, this bell curve. We're going to describe um, where this bell curve comes from uh, as it relates to using software. So the normal distribution first, what is it? Now, there are different shape distributions. There's the standard normal distribution that is sometimes called the Z distribution that is um, got this shape. The T distribution, which doesn't have as much of a peak and a flatter shape to it. Um, and there are a variety of other uh, distributions that are out there that have different names and F distribution uh, and so forth. So we might uh, look at some graphs of those uh, in future parts of this uh, online class. So moving on to what this means. So I'm going to first tell you that you'll have an average, which is our mean. And in a normal distribution, if it fits the normal distribution perfectly, this mean value will be the median value as well and will be your mode. Will be your most frequently observed observations observation. If you were to rank the data from lowest to highest, your median would also be right there. If you were to calculate the average, it would be right there. And as they tend to cluster in this area, that would tell you that if your mean, median, and mode are all clustered together um, and you have this kind of shape to your data, and that is a shape that can be applied to a histogram, a bar chart of your data in terms of the frequency of observations on the y-axis, if your mean on average is right there for that population, for the variable that you're interested in, then you have a normal distribution. 68% of the values should be within one standard deviation. 34% of the, that, or half of that 68%, which represents 34% of your total data, are one standard deviation above, 34% are one standard deviation below. And then 95% of your data are within two standard deviations of the mean. And almost all of it, 99.7% of the data, are within three standard deviations of the mean. And then you've got these tails that can go on a long way until the uh, lowest and highest numbers in your data set. Now, this is what you'll see in textbooks. What do you see in life? So in life, um, how does how does the software deal with this? So for life expectancy, if I were to go to Stata and type in this command histogram life expectancy 14, which is our variable, it will will take those numbers. Now life expectancy, they had decimals on those numbers for what it estimated life expectancy to be for every county in the U.S. So if you want to know the life expectancy for every county in the U.S. and want to see the kind of the distribution for the United States and see does it fit the normal distribution. And you got this longer left left side to it, um, but do we fit the normal distribution or not? I mean, we know that you can do a normality test. It does seem to have that shape to it a little bit, but what's the actual shape of the curve associated with this? All that. So we don't plot every single value on here as an individual value. Like where does where does uh, you know seventy one point two go? You know it's going to fit into one of these bends. So not me, but Stata in this case determined that we can take our data and break it up into thirty four bends. So that's a bend. There it looks like a bend. That's a bin. That's a bin. So there's number one number or one county or maybe even a few counties that fit in some of these bins. And then this is the, the frequency of these bins. So the density represents, you know, in this case, 15% of the data 
are in this bin. 15% or more are in this bin. 15% or more in that bin. 15% or more are in that bin. So about 60, actually more than 60% of the data, probably close to 68% of the data, are all right here in just these four bins alone. And then this bin might have about 14%. If we were to draw a line there, that bin's got about 10% of the data, and it should all add up to 100% density, or 1.0. So I didn't determine these bends, Stata determined the bends. Now, I can use a command by putting a comma after this in Stata and tell it to draw what its best normal distribution would be for our data set. So it, by typing in the command freak normal, freak normal, we get a overlay of its best version of the true normal distribution of what it should be. So these lines should go all the way up. These lines should be down a little lower. So our mean, its best determination of the mean would be right there. So these frequencies would all have to add up to our sample size, which was over 3,100 counties. So that's the number of bends. So how do our data look in regards to uh, these numbers? How far are our values away from, six, from uh, the mean? So if we wanted to calculate a standard deviation for each of our, uh, for our data set as a whole, or just to see how each county compares to the actual mean, we can do that seeing how much kind of variability we have in our data. So how do we do that? Well, in statistics, we rely a lot on a term called standard deviation. You'll also hear about variance, and you may also hear something that's somewhat related but different, a uh, standard error. So all of those things tend to relate to sample size, and the generally speaking, the larger the sample size, the lesser amount of error on the standard error um, and then if you have a large sample size with low variability um, then you're going to have really low low error so we're going to talk a little more about making sense to that what i just said here in a second so what is standard deviation sometimes you'll see people abbreviate it as t d e v you'll see it as s d You'll see it sometimes as lowercase s. Um, mathematically, though, most folks like to give it the letter lowercase sigma. Um, so not the big E-looking sigma that you see that says sum, but little sigma. Little sigma is what some people will call your standard deviation. How do we calculate it? Well, the uh, standard deviation is the square root of the sum of your means squared over your sample size minus 1. Well, easier said than done. So if we're going to calculate the standard deviation, sigma tells us we have to sum each individual value's distance from the mean. So how far does this county deviate from the, the sample mean? Or in this case, we could maybe even make that mu because it was the whole population of the United States. So how does it deviate from the actual uh, mean? For each difference, if the life expectancy was 76 on average for the country and this county was 77, you would do one You'd be 77 minus 76, and you'd get 1, and you would square it. 1 times 1, and then that county would be equal to 1. And then you would sum all of every county up in terms of how much it deviates from the mean squared and divide that by the total number of counties, 3,100 or so, minus 1, and then that square root of all that will give us the standard deviation. It's a lot if you were to be doing that by hand, which I used to have to do. Not fun. 
So if we wanted to get the Owsley County standard deviation to see how far away it deviates from the mean, in this case our mean was 77.75 for the U.S., Owsley County, Kentucky had a life expectancy of 70.21. If we wanted to see how we did on that, we would have to subtract the Owsley County value from 77.75, and then we would square it. So it's a, about, I don't know, what is that, 7.5-ish or so, 7.54 squared. So 7 times 7 is 49, 7.5-ish times 7.5-ish gives us 56.85. So that county contributes 56.85 as a sum of, or as a squared value. Um, the sum of each county's departure is an added, and this is called the sum of squares. So n minus 1 uh, down here is the sample size minus 1, which is easy to get. 3,135 minus 1, which is 3,134. So there are ways of getting this very easily in, um, you know, Stata and Microsoft Excel. So I'm just going to show you in Microsoft Excel how it's done manually, and then I'm going to show you the really easy way. I'm going to show you the manual way just because I think it's important to see, you know, in the big scheme of things, how it's done. So we have every county in the United States here ranked from lowest to highest. They don't have to be ranked from lowest to highest to do this um, because it, you're going to add it all up here in a second. But you have to know what the county's life expectancy is on average or what was in there. So the life expectancy for this particular county was 66.8, which is a very low life expectancy. The average for the whole country was 77.75. So what was the departure from 66.81? So I would do C2 minus D2, and then I had to square it. So the departure was 10.94, so minus 10.94, and then when I square it to the second power, when I square it, it's 119.686. So you would do that for every county in the United States. I could copy and paste that command all the way down, which is what I already did. And you scroll, scroll, scroll to all 3,000 plus counties in the United States. There's a lot. And as we get closer and closer to the actual mean, you can see some of these don't contribute nearly as much to the actual amount of deviation going on. When you get really close to the mean, there's no deviation. So these are like your middle counties. They're really close to the average of 77.75. So when we get all the way to the bottom, you know, we're going to see these deviations start going back up again. So the counties are the biggest outliers. And then eventually we get to a county that had a life expectancy of 86, which is way more than 77. When you do the subtraction and square it, that county contributed. 82. So we have to add up all of that. So I sum all the squared values. They call this the sum of squares. And when I do that, it was 17,756. Going back to our formula, what do we do? We have the sum of squares. We summed all the squared terms, divide it by the number of counties minus 1. So back to Excel, the number of counties minus 1. So the number of counties minus 1, so 3,135 minus 1 is 3,134. And then, so I could actually get that big number, and that's 5.665. That's what you get when you sum the squares, divide it by n minus 1. And I want the square root equals square root of all that. And that gives me 2.38. If I wanted to speed this up in Excel, I can just type in equal standard deviation, STDEV, highlight all the data real quick. See if I can do it in the last few seconds of this video. We're racing. I don't know if I'm going to make it. 
and I would hit enter, but that's not it. So